Hey sports fans, Coach Nick here and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. Shocking news and first of all, forgive my voice because uh, it's that time of the year where I'm coaching a whole lot, but uh, shocking news, Mike Brown fired. I couldn't believe it. I thought for sure they'd give him a few more games at least. We showed the other day how it wasn't the offense that was the issue. At the time it was ranked ninth uh, and it, that was without Steve Nash for most of those games. The defense is ranked near the bottom. So I'm going to show you the issues. And the reason why he got fired, I think, is because he's a defensive coach. And yet the team across the board didn't display the kind of defensive philosophy that you would think a defensive coach would have installed by now. Let's face it, the point guard position is one of the toughest to defend in the NBA. And when you have slow-footed Steve Blake out there playing so many minutes, they're just going to pick on him all day. The opponents understood this and tried to ISO as much as they could, but Dwight Howard never showed the recognition that he should be over there earlier to help out. It's really not his fault. He's playing against starters. He doesn't have the kind of quickness and explosion necessary. And because of that, he has to give guards in the open court extra space, and Mo Williams could just take that all day. And teams were so intent on attacking him, they'd even set multiple screens on him, which isn't even fair to him because he certainly can't catch up on those shots. And the screen and roll has really hurt the Lakers, and Pau Gasol playing the screener has really been a problem because he can't pressure the ball and he doesn't close out well. In transition, he's also poor about getting back in position, and here they do a very quick screen and roll. He can't even step up, and now they have to switch and ISO, and it's all over with Chris Paul attacking him. They're going to screen and attack with Dwight Howard's man, so he has to be able to help out on the penetration, which he's terrible at. It's frightening to me how much room he gives professional players on these screen rolls. And teams have no fear of driving to the hoop when he's near the basket. Most big men are mobile and can put the ball on the floor, so if they bring Dwight Howard out, it's Pau Gasol who needs to help out. Utah runs a high post split right out of the Princeton offense, so you think the Lakers would know how to defend this. The guy's going to go around and Pau Gasol should come over and help out on the drive. He stands there and watches the layup. Powell likes to rely on his size and length, but look how he stands straight up. He's not quick that way, and he doesn't have the ability to explode again and contest that shot either. And because he's so slow, he has to give a lot of room to his man on the perimeter, and that just means jump shots. And on the high screen and roll, he has to be able to contain the penetrator a little bit to allow Dwight Howard to get over there and contest. But Batum gets there so fast, Howard can't even stop it. And most fours can shoot outside now, and Pau Gasol consistently gives way too much room to someone like LaMarcus Aldridge, who's going to nail it all day. And teams aren't dumb. They watch footage like I do. They'll pick and pop all day on Pau Gasol's man. And here it appears they lacked a general screen and roll philosophy. Look at how much room Dwight Howard gives, and then Metal World Peace is supposed to rotate over on the inside of Lamar Odom and doesn't get there. Here's where it looks like they're poorly coached. Look how much room the screener's man's giving the ball handler, allowing all sorts of penetration. And it's a team-wide thing. It's not just one guy doing it. Here's an Ebanks hedge where he doesn't even hedge. He runs away from the ball and lets him shoot a jumper. Now, maybe it's Dwight Howard's back, but he used to be much better at hedging, and he's giving way too much room on those screens. And Jordan Hill's supposed to be a defensive player, but watch how he backs up on this pitch. No pressure on the ball, wide open jumper. And another example of Dwight Howard not hedging at all on that screening roll. And they didn't appear organized on the rotational defense against the cut. Watch Kobe, who should be all the way over on that, and instead leaves the guy down there for a dunk. Coaching defense is all about having good habits. Watch how everyone out there is kind of standing around, not in a defensive stance, and Kobe particularly lets the guy cut right through and get an open shot. Here's another example. Look at Antoine Jameson. It's like his knees are locked on purpose. He's standing straight up and gets beat back door. How about Jordan Hill? Standing straight up and down, not ready to play defense. His man screens. He's way late on the help, and they get a lob and a dunk. And there was no real focus on rotations on cuts, and that was a real problem. Here you'll see Kobe supposed to rotate down because what would you rather give up, a wide open three or a dunk? Well, there's your answer. So there you have it, sports fans. D 
defense wins championships, and when you play defense like this, it ain't gonna cut it. Now, I don't think any team has ever won a championship having switched coaches in the middle of the year, and certainly not this early. So you might have to write the Lakers off for this year, amazingly enough, because who knows if Steve Nash is going to get back and how far in the hole they're going to be. You cannot have Steve Blake playing 35 minutes a game and hope to win a lot of games. Well, don't forget, tomorrow our effing fantasy show is coming up. It's been getting bigger and bigger, and if you want to win your fantasy league, you got to watch it because me and Tom Lorenzo of SB Nation give you straight knowledge about what's going to happen this week and what the surprises were from last week. So don't miss it because at B-Ball Breakdown, it's not a channel. It's a conversation. You win, 